everything you didn't know about Susan Boyle. Susan Boyle wowed audiences when she first appeared on Britain's Got Talent back in 2009. But it hasn't always been an easy ride for the Scottish spinster. Dubbed both Simple Susie and the woman that silenced Simon Cowell, Susan Boyle certainly made some waves in her time. Now, almost 10 years later, Boyle is back on our screens competing for the top spot in America's Got Talent, The Champions. Join us as we take a look at everything you didn't know about Susan Boyle. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos about your favorite movies and TV shows. Her audition was staged. It's easy for us sitting at home to buy into the hype of shows like The X Factor and AGT. To us, it looks as though these people are walking onto the stage for the first time, meeting judges that they've never met before. But that's not always the case. Susan Boyle's audition made her famous, mainly because no one expected the odd, frumpily dressed woman to have that angel voice. Her attitude had crowds thinking that she was just another delusional contestant hoping to have her five minutes of fame. So when Boyle started to sing like an angel, the world was stunned. She was an instant hit, making us feel awful for prematurely judging her based on appearance. But therein lies the magic. According to numerous sources, Simon Cowell had already seen Susan before in the pre-TV audition vetting process. He actively encouraged this incredibly talented but naive woman to confess to the world at large that she was a virgin and had never even French kissed. When it came to makeovers, Simon purposely left Susan pretty much as she was, while other contestants got the whole nine yards. It might look like organic television, but what we really saw was a a very clever business strategy unfold, all at the hands of one of the music industry's biggest pros. YouTube Scam Cost Her Votes you could be the most talented person there, but if the public doesn't vote for you, you'll still end up the loser. Some individuals vote for their favorite acts dozens of times, especially now that you can do it for free over apps. Susan was set to win. It seemed like no one could outshine her and the effect that her voice had on the British public. But dance troupe diversity was hot on her heels. When it came down to the final vote, Susan lost by just 4.7%. According to an article published in the Daily Telegraph shortly after, Boyle could have been scammed out of votes by a deliberately edited YouTube video. The clips of the final performances were uploaded to the platform immediately after, but the phone number was edited. Susan's number should have ended in 09, but she was given the number 07. Diversity's calling number. YouTube later denied claims that Susan would have won if it wasn't for the unofficially released clips, claiming that the broadcaster ITV had complete control over what footage went up on the website. On the other hand, ITV washed their hands of any responsibility, saying that they could not control the content from unofficial sources. Was it a fix? Who knows? But it didn't dent Boyle's bank balance she was psychologically evaluated. Susan's appearance on the show got people talking, but the conversation wasn't just about her talent. Many people thought that Susan was being taken advantage of for the entertainment of others. Boyle reportedly became so upset during the competition that she swore at a group of journalists and threatened to quit the show altogether. ITV bosses had to deny that they were overloading the hopeful with pressure, but it was quite clear that something was going to give at some point. After narrowly losing the competition, Susan was admitted into the Priory Rehabilitation Center in Southgate. Even the British Prime Minister expressed concern for the singing sensation's health. The police were called to a central London hotel as doctors assessed Boyle, although it's not clear if there was a disruption or the docs just wanted help keeping the press at bay. It soon emerged that Susan, who has Asperger's syndrome and learning difficulties after being starved of oxygen at birth, was never psychologically tested by producers before they allowed her to go on to the show. Thankfully, Susan seems to be doing much better these days. Auto-Tune Scandal 
There's no doubting that Susan was one of the best voices in her genre, but she was one of the many contestants slammed when the show was called out for digitally enhancing voices in the audition stages. In 2010, The Evening Standard broke the news that both of Simon Cowell's biggest British TV shows, The X Factor and Britain's Got Talent, were guilty of smoothing out faults in voices using technology before the show was aired. One insider said, The sounds are cleaned up. It's an open secret and an industry standard. 120 million people watched Susan Boyle belt out I Dreamed a Dream from the musical Les Mis, and it's clear by the reaction of the live audience that she certainly did a good job of it. It's just that what viewers at home heard wasn't the real thing. The bosses defended their editing by saying the performances shown on screen was a fair reflection of the live article, and judges made their decision on what they saw in front of them. Still, we can't help but feel feel a little blindsided, can we? She still lives in a council house. Simon Cowell knows an investment when he sees one, so it's no surprise that he helped Boyle make some money after the show, even though she didn't win. The star's first album sold millions of copies, and she quickly amassed a fortune of around $30 million. Like most people that get some serious cash, Susie bought herself a new home worth around 400000 k The five-bedroom property was a far cry from her previous home that she had lived in all her life which was a small terraced house on a council estate in Scotland. Despite the newfound luxury, Boyle couldn't get used to her new spacious surroundings and instead moved back into her old family home. Staying in her old house wasn't easy, though, and in 2017, the star revealed she was frequently attacked by a gang of youths that were trying to bully her out of the area. Rather than succumbing to pressure, though, Susan has stood her ground. I love my house. It's where I grew up, she told the Daily Mail. Why should I move out because of a group of teenagers who behave like that? They are bullies who shout and throw things, but it is my home and it's where I feel safe. Good for you, Susie Q. She found a boyfriend at 53. Susan was always focused on her family, having grown up with nine siblings. Rather than head out and face the world, Boyle dedicated herself to caring for her mother, who died two years before she appeared on BGT. According to neighbors, Susan was so distraught by the death of her mom that she didn't leave the house for days. As we've previously mentioned, Boyle let the world know that she was extremely inexperienced in love, but everything changed when she met her first boyfriend in 2014. Although the star didn't say much about her new boo, she did tell the media that he was an American doctor, whom she had met when staying in a hotel. The pair were spotted enjoying a romantic dinner in a fancy restaurant, but she kept tight-lipped about the rest. Did it work out? Who knows? But at least the star had her first date, even if it did take her 53 years to get there. Family is important. Coming from such a big family as she does, it's hardly surprising that Susan is pretty tight with them. As we've already touched upon, she was really close to her mom, who she continued to live with and nurse up until her death at the age of 91. Boyle was also incredibly close to her elder sister, Birdie, who made it her job to protect her younger sibling. Sadly, Susan suffered another loss in 2015 when Birdie passed away after battling cancer. She told the media that her sister helped to keep her humble and wasn't afraid to take her down a peg or two when she started getting too big for her boots. Understandably, Susan took some time off to deal with the loss, putting the album she was working on on hold until she felt she was able to go back to work. It wasn't always smooth sailing in the Boyle family, though, especially between Susan and her brother Jerry. According to sources, the pair fell out in December of 2013 after Jerry allegedly coerced his sis into giving him £50,000 by threatening to commit suicide if she didn't. When other family members found out, they intervened and all hell broke loose, with the pair ultimately not talking to each other for two years. They eventually reconciled in 2016 when Susan had a breakdown in an airport and called Jerry for support. It didn't take long for her brother to work his way back into her good graces after they connected, with the two pictured shortly after in some goofy family snaps. She hasn't charted since 2013. 
Although Susan has managed to pave a fairly successful career as far as musicians go, she desperately needed something to put her back on the map, hence her latest appearance on AGT's Champions. Her last album, A Wonderful World, was released in 2016, but became her lowest charting album in the UK to date. The last single she released was a cover of the Secret Garden song, You Raise Me Up, which previously did very well for the Irish band Westlife. Audiences didn't really respond to the ditty and the song didn't chart at all. The last song of Susan's to have a chart impact was the 2013 Christmas carol, Oh Come All Ye Faithful, which was sung with Elvis Presley as a posthumous mix. Even then, it only reached number 48. It's not difficult to see why Susan is trying to get her out there again, is it? Thank you very much for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more amazing content, and don't forget to check out one of the other two videos on your screen.